Hello there everybody, this is another late night nerdy geeky, uh, and tonight I just want to talk about uh, the new Star Wars Rebels, I just watched the season 2 premiere, it was a double episode, uh, it was 43 minutes long, um, and I thought I thought it was really good. Uh, I didn't do a video on the first season, so I'll just quickly uh, say that I really enjoyed the first season, it was a lot better than I expected. I enjoyed the Clone Wars, um, especially towards the end of the Clone Wars when it got a little bit more adult and it got a little bit more dark and gritty, uh, but this really takes it to another step, it feels like you. It feels like classic Star Wars, um, and they do a lot of things to tie in with the old Star Wars films, which I'll go over um, in a couple of minutes. Um, but first of all, I'd like to say about season two. I'm not going to talk about any specific spoilers, but I'm going to talk about things, but um, things that happen within the episode, but things that you would have seen if you've seen the trailer. If you want to go into this fresh, it's probably worth stopping now. But if you don't mind hearing about a couple of characters that pop up in this episode, um, there's been so much content out there though at the moment, and this is the only gripe that. I've got Disney's pumped so much content out there, so many previews, so many trailers, um, so many they name dropped a lot of people that are in the episode. That nothing that happened in the episode was a surprise to me. In fact, I was waiting for most of it to happen within the episode, which spoiled the episode a little bit for me. Disney themselves spoiled this episode quite a lot. I would have liked them just to just release a general trailer, not showing too much, and then just leave it there. That's all Star Wars fans really need is just a kick to say this is when it's out and this is kind of what's going to be in it, and that's all we need. We don't need video after video of preview talk to this person, this content, this person's going to be in it. We don't want that. It was a 43 minute episode and they released pretty much 20 minutes of it in previews. Um, but anyway, that was my biggest gripe about the before the episode. The episode, even though going into it I knew what was kind of going to happen, was still a great episode. It was a great start to the series and it really set the tone for this series. Uh, it really started with a bang, quite literally. Um, you got to see the great Darth Vader with James Earl Jones doing his voice. Fantastic. Um, although I think they made Darth Vader a little bit like thin. Um, if you look at him in episode four, he's quite broad shoulders and he's quite like sort of a, not beefy, but he's a he's a bigger guy. And they made him quite thin and narrow in this to keep with the art style. Um, it kind of made him less menacing. They gave him a really evil looking mask though, but uh, you know he's supposed to be the bad guy. It's very clear cut, and then you know because this is for aimed at kids as well. Kids know who the bad guy is. It's quite clean cut for them. That's absolutely fine. He still looked good. He still sounded awesome, and he got loads of screen time, which I was really happy with. Um, my favourite character is back in it, Ahsoka Tano. Absolutely love Ahsoka. I know a lot of people don't like her from the Clone Wars, but I still hold, and I'll probably do a video on this that, that Ahsoka Tano is the be in, in, in the whole of Star Wars, all across the Star Wars, she has the best character progression and the most character progression, I believe. And I'll explain that in a future video, probably my next video, um, of why I believe that. Um, but I, we got to see her, she's an adult, same voice actress as well, fantastic, love that. Much more powerful Jedi, as you can see, uh, even though she's not technically a Jedi. Um, you see uh, Darth Vader, a little bit of an interaction. Uh, a little bit of a lightsaber fight with Kanan, uh, Kanan and Ezra, um, although brief, it was interesting and really showed that Darth Vader is going to be a real problem for them. Uh, we got to see a little bit of the Rebels, the actual Rebel fleet rather than just our resident Rebel, Rebels on Lothal, uh, and the episode's called The Siege of Lothal, um, and the really does get sieged. Um, so yeah, very good, Lot got to see lots of um, characters. The reason why I like Rebels so much is, is the little things they put into this, like very narrow lightsabers. Uh, to match the lightsabers in episode four, um, and when they when they fight and clash, you get these whole screen, just very brief, quick white or green flashes, very similar to the Darth Vader and old Ben Kenobi lightsaber fight in Star Wars episode four. And I know that was due, just due to the graphics at the time and the bad graphics, but it ties in nicely to say, yeah, well, this is what lightsabers are like. It's not just that it was bad graphics; this is what it looks like, um, kind of. And I think that's really nice. They haven't just gone for the chunky lightsabers, and then five years later, the sun really narrow. It's been 15 years. Um, I don't know if there's any kind of power issue or, or crystal issue with the lightsabers. I, I, I haven't read that deep into that sort of thing, but I don't think there is. Um, but it just ties in nicely that they used to be quite chunky, but now they're quite narrow, quite pointy, quite stick-like. Uh, but I kind of like it. They kind of look like swords now again, rather than these just big chunky sort of cylindrical blades. They look like actual sort of narrow slicing blades. They look quite dangerous and thin. Um, getting to see Darth Vader fight is really well, really well done. He doesn't jump around or do somersaults, very calculating slashes so he doesn't move around too much, very similar to episode four when he fights Ben Kenobi or even any of the other 
um, any of the other old trilogy. Um, I think this is a really nice tie into episode four. I'm hoping you're going to get to see some of these characters and maybe some of the anthology. Maybe even see uh, Ahsoka or Kanan or Ezra um, in the first anthology film, Rogue One. I would love that. But anyway, more about Rebels. Season two, episode one was brilliant. I loved it. It was a it was a little slower paced, but it had a lot in it, and it sort of set up a lot for the next. Um, series. It really shows that the Rebels just aren't going to have an easy time with the Empire. You got to see some uh, Star Destroyers that kind of look like their updated versions of the old um, Clone Wars uh, Star Destroyer Republic carriers. Um, but at the same time, they're now moving towards the actual, what we see, think is a classic looking um, Star Destroyer. Uh, so nice little tie in there. Start to see lots of vehicles that are, and you start to see A wings come around, and you start to see um, Imperial shuttles come around, like the Tidarium kind of style. Um, very much looking forward to more of this season. I'll be I'll be watching it every week, um, and I'm glad that they start the ep that start the series off with a 43 minute episode. It's much better than starting the series off with a 20 minute episode. Um, lots of content. Uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. I, I enjoy Rebels. I think Rebels is going to be better than The Clone Wars, although it's got, obviously, a newer cast that they've created. Um, you hear mention of Obi-Wan Kenobi in this, um, or old Ben Kenobi, um, as as he will look. Uh, before Rebels came out, there was there was promo art of both old, uh, aged Ahsoka and very aged old Ben, um, and it was very, very good. Um, you get You don't see... But you get to hear the voice of the Emperor in this, uh, voiced by Sam Witwer, and he's brilliant. I, I had to look it up because I thought it was Ian McDermott. Um, so yeah, he was a brilliant voice actor, did a really, really good job. And you'll probably know him as Starkiller in, um, in, in, the, in the Force Unleashed games, uh, and the actual character was based on his looks. He was also in Battlestar Galactica. Um, so yeah, he did a brilliant job of that. I'm very, very much looking forward to seeing more of Darth Vader, more of the Emperor, more of this interaction between Ahsoka and Darth Vader and it's pointed at even though she says she doesn't it's pointed at that Ahsoka might even know Darth Vader's true identity which will be very interesting to see her progression and maybe this affects her quite negatively to know that her her old master Anakin Skywalker who she looked up to and she loved very dearly has turned to the dark side and become Darth Vader um, killer of children destroyer of worlds and all sorts um, Sith Lord badass so yeah um, please if you've got a different opinion or the same opinion or you want to write what your opinion is please put it in the comment section below I'd love to read it uh, I, I'll also link my Twitter uh, my new dedicated nerdy geeky Twitter um, I will link my blog dedicated and I'll also link my dedicated Tumblr if you'd rather uh, view these through Tumblr but if that's a neater sort of platform I know that that can be a bit more neat um, but and I'll also link these videos into all those medias anyway so you can find them if you follow them on any of these medias thank you very much for watching please subscribe if you want to see more content or watch my old content uh, and then you get notified when I bring out a new video uh, and thank you for watching thank you to all my viewers and subscribers um, till the next video